Hi, what's up, chicas? How's everybody doing? So, welcome to my very first true crime story. Oh my god, I am so excited. So, we're going to be doing nails and we're also going to be, uh, well, I'm going to be telling you a true crime story, which I was reading about it, you guys. And when I was reading about it, I was so shook. Honestly, it is such a very, a very sad story, honestly. But let's just get started with the story. So today's story is about the unsolved case of Dorothy Scott. So in May 1980, Dorothy Scott disappeared after receiving many, many weird phone calls. This was from a strange man. Nobody ever knew who it was since this case went cold. So nobody really knows who this man was. Four years after her disappearance, a construction worker found her remains, and unfortunately, after 40 years, her case has not been solved. So, Dorothy was born April 23, 1948, in Anaheim, California, and in the year 1976, she birthed her son, Sean. She was a single mother because her son's father was not in the picture she he i'm sorry he was never in the picture and he actually lived in missouri so in the year 1980 she was 32 and her son was four at this time she was living with her aunt in stanton california so by this time dorothy was working as a back office secretary at a swingers psych shop and custom john head shop so these were two separate businesses they were co-owned and dorothy's father was a co-owner of swingers psych shop she would provide for her son this way so every day she would just drop off her son at her parents house they would watch over him while she worked so dorothy was also described as an amazing mother kind and compassionate she was also a christian who attended church on the regular so she never drank, no drugs, and not even date, you guys. All her time was dedicated to her son. At the beginning of the year of 1980, Dorothy started to receive weird phone calls. The calls were received at home and at work. This was an unknown male. They never knew who it was, like I said at the beginning. She even went on to tell her mom and co-workers that this man's voice sounded a little familiar, except that she couldn't just, you know, pinpoint who it was. She couldn't, um, she wasn't sure whose voice it was, you know? So the calls were somewhat awkward because there was times where the man would tell her how much he loved her, how beautiful she was, and all this. And then there was other times where he would threaten to kill her. One of the scariest phone calls that she received from this man was um, him telling her how he was going to kill her and how he was going to dismember her body so that nobody can find her. This strange man also uh, confessed to her that he was constantly stalking her. Um, he would pretty much tell her what she was doing during the day or what she would be wearing during the day he would describe to her what she had been doing and what she was wearing so they were kind of awkward like i said and um and these calls went on for months and i mean months another weird thing about the the calls was that when he called her one day asked her to look outside supposedly he had left a gift for her when she did she found a dead rose on the windshield of her 1973 station wagon i mean come on you guys just imagine how scared she was for her life um how scary that was for her to you know receive these weird phone calls from a very unknown male a very unknown person that she doesn't know and you know she's she's scared to death at this point so what she did was that she actually took karate lessons in order to defend herself in case this man actually took action in what he was threatening to do to her on the morning of may 28 1980 
As usual, she dropped off her son, Sean, off her parents' house, and she headed off to work to an employee meeting. At the meeting, she noticed one of her co-workers, Conrad Bostron, a little ill. She saw him kind of sweating and also noticed a big red rash on his arm. She noticed that this uh, rash was getting a little swollen, so Dorothy was very concerned about her co-worker's well-being. You know, it was, he was, she saw him really ill, so she was getting very concerned about that. Um... So Dorothy, she eventually um, convinced him to take him to the hospital. So Dorothy took him to the UCI Medical Center. Another co-worker named Pan decided to come along with them. And on the way, Dorothy stopped at her parents' house to check on her son. You know, she just wanted to see how Sean was doing, to see how everything was going with him, and actually to let her parents know what was going on, that she was going to take, you know, Conrad to the hospital and all that. So, um, she stopped at the house, and then she actually changed her scarf from the black scarf that she had onto a red scarf. So they headed off to the hospital and turns out that Conrad's rash was a black widow's bite. So Conrad ended up being at the hospital all day and all night. And Dorothy and Pam were there all day with him, you know, all night waiting for him. And um, he was actually discharged at about 11 p.m. Since Conrad was still very weak and Dorothy decided to just you know go get the car and bring it onto the front of the hospital so he could just you know hop in and leave while she was doing that pam and conrad went onto the pharmacy to pick up his medications or his prescriptions once they picked up the meds they headed to the front of the hospital where they thought dorothy was waiting they waited for about 20 minutes and since there was no sign of dorothy they just decided to walk where the car was originally parked. So as they were walking, they saw Dorothy's car coming full speed towards them. You know, they're trying to, you know, they're trying to um, yell and scream and, you know, wave their hands and everything so that she knows that they're there, but um, she never stopped. So, you know, they weren't really able to see anything or who was driving since they had the high beams on. So, like, the beams were right on their faces. They're so high, they can't see a thing who's driving, who who's inside the car or anything. So, the car passes them, like, literally passes them. They even tried to chase after the car, but obviously they couldn't, you know, catch up with it. So, you know, the car passes them and eventually... The car turns off the lights completely, turns right, and they never saw the car again. So they just thought it was, you know, kind of weird. Like, what the heck? Like, what is she doing? Maybe there's something wrong with Sean, you know. So she'll be right back. And they waited there. They actually waited outside the hospital for about two hours. But eventually they realized that... Dorothy wasn't coming back so they decided to call Dorothy's parents and you know they asked them like hey has she been home is she there where is she but the parents replied and said that they had not seen her that's when Pam decided to call the police and honestly I don't know what's up with the cops but the police literally told them that they weren't really gonna look into the case or they weren't gonna search for her or anything like that they were just not interested just because she was an adult and she could do whatever she wanted so literally uh about five hours and the police were interested on the case because they found her car lit on fire literally on flames about 30 miles away 30 ish miles away from you know where they were located and you know there was no sign of dorothy nowhere search parties were looking for her but nothing nothing no sign of dorothy so the calls that dorothy was receiving didn't stop just yet about a week later her mother received a strange phone call you guys from a strange male mm -hmm. who do you think that was so he he just said 
are you related to Dorothy Scott? She said yes. Then he said, I've got her. And then just hung up the phone. After the call, she called the police right away and let them know that this strange guy was calling her. So after about a week later, Dorothy's father was kind of losing hope. And, you know, he was just kind of fed up with the cops. There was just really no sign of Dorothy. And the cops didn't have no leads or anything. So he decided to take the case to Santa Ana's register, which is just a newspaper uh, place. So then the paper published Dorothy's case and offered a 2500 reward for any information about Dorothy's whereabouts. The day the story was published, the editor of the Santa Ana's register received a strange phone call from a strange man. The man said, I killed her. I killed Dorothy Scott. She was my love. I caught her cheating with another man and she denied having someone else. So this man also went on into detail about things that had not been released to the public. He knew that Dorothy had changed her scarf. He also knew about Conrad's spider bites and he knew that Dorothy took him to the hospital to the ICU medical center. He also said Dorothy called him hours before she disappeared from the hospital, which was kind of weird because Pam said there was no way since they were both together the whole night at the hospital. So Sean's father, Dorothy's ex, was not even a suspect since he was in Missouri and was ruled out as a suspect. I don't know, you guys. I just think this is a very, very weird case because there was no suspects. Like, she had no beef with anyone. She had no enemies. She was such a, like, a good young, you know, soul. Um, honestly, it's just really weird. Uh, they pretty much ruled everybody, even at her job, like, they ruled everybody out as suspects. Nobody was a suspect at all like they had no leads like literally the only lead they had was the phone calls but other than that like there was a dead end so weird even psychics were called because there was no other leads no evidence to the case dorothy stalker would keep calling her parents for the next four years every wednesday he would call and say you know just stuff like i have her where is she? You know, just playing sick games with Dorothy's parents. Police even placed recorders on the family's home phone. But no one recognized this man's voice. Um, You know, it's so weird, you guys. They also try to track down the call, like, to see where it was coming from. But the calls never lasted enough time so that the cops, you know, they weren't able to trace it. You know what I mean? He would just like call and, you know, where is she and play these sick, twisted games with the family. And then um, he wouldn't even last that long, that period of time to where the cops need to track the phone call. So he would just, you know, hang up. So it was just, again, dead end. After that, in April around 1984, he called and Dorothy's father answered and, you know, he just didn't even call again. That was pretty much, like, the last time he called in a very long time. So, the case pretty much went cold until August 6th of 1984 when a construction worker found remains of a dog at Santa Ana Canyon Road, about 40-ish miles from the UCI hospital. The worker kept digging until he found human remains beneath the dog's remains you guys he found a human pelvis an arm two thighs and a skull the body was found with a turquoise ring and a a watch that stopped at 12 30 a.m on may 29 1980 the day dorothy went missing her mom id'd the ring and said it did belong to Dorothy. So about a week after the remains were found, dental records confirmed that the remains belonged to Dorothy Scott. 
they were not able to determine a cause of death and due to the severe decom decompens I can't say that word you guys decomposition and lack of remains so they weren't really able to, to determine how she passed away how she died how they killed her um if it was a shot wound or you know whatever the case maybe we don't know um but they weren't able to determine her her death you know what i mean so that's kind of sad and yeah and still like after her her uh, i'm sorry her remains were found uh this stalker guy went on to calling them once again and literally played one last sick twisted game with them he literally called and said is dorothy there since then you know there there hasn't been any other lead um it's been about 37 years close to 40 years you guys in this case when cold there's no other leads there's no other evidence and there's nothing that connects anybody to this case um dorothy's parents both died and never received closure to their daughter's death like that is so sad you guys you know you as a parent you're hoping that you might one day get closure and at least know what happened to your daughter and you never get that you know your death comes and you never knew what happened you know it's it's kind of sad it, this is a very sad story um as you guys know i actually uploaded a story onto my instagram and i told you guys that this was something i was fascinated with and i really wanted to do kind of like um bailey sarian type of style you know she does makeup and true crime well i'm gonna be doing nails and true crime it was something that was on my head for about a couple of months now and no me animaba like i was like no no i'm not gonna do this i'm not i can't you know it's too much but honestly you guys i was like searching um going through these stories again and i was like you know what this is a great story to begin with like it's not great because honestly it's this happened to someone and this was someone's daughter but you know i really wanna you know i wanted to put this case out there for you guys it is a very very sad the way you know how it's been close to 40 years and um there's no other evidence you know hopefully there is hopefully there is more evidence and we find out who this person was that killed her but we'll see you guys we'll see if there's you know anything else in the case i will keep you guys posted um hopefully there is like i said and we'll see we'll keep on i'll keep on digging to see if there's any updates to the case but yeah like i was telling you um this was this is something that really fascinates me true crime and, and nails these are like two, my two main things that i love to watch do and all that um i love to sit down whenever i'm recording your your videos for you guys this is what i do i literally sit down and record the videos and i put a true crime story on especially from bailey sarian so yeah i was like you know what why not do it why not nails and true crime so i don't I thought nobody had been doing this, but I went on to YouTube and I saw another YouTuber that she's doing it too. And um, she does really nice nails, you guys. And I'm like, hey, cool, you know, there's somebody else doing it. Um, but this is not going to stop me from doing it. I want to do it too. And I don't know, you guys. I really, really, really hope you guys like it and enjoy it. And, you know... If you're like me that you guys like nails and true crime, let's just combine them and let's do two together. Two in one. <laughs> so yeah, you guys, um, this video was, well, the story was a little short. It was uh, very short just because, again, and there's no evidence, there's no leads, there's no nothing to it. 
it it just sort of just happened you know so it is it was kind of short uh so yeah you guys um right here i'm just gonna you know file my nails and all that shebang all these products used the acrylics used the purple the glittery one and the pink are all on my new online store i do not i still have my etsy shop you guys but if you're planning to buy like my old products which my old products are five dollars a piece you can go to my etsy shop if you guys are wondering where you can purchase you know my new stuff my new collections my tips and all that you can go to my online store which i will have it linked i will have both linked in my description box below um so yeah i'm really excited for my new online store it turned out super good honestly i am i am so happy for it uh so yeah again everything will be linked in the description box below and yeah chicas i'm gonna let you guys watch all this and i'll be back
Okay chicas, so this would be the end result. I just went ahead and applied my top coat, which is from Not Polish. We do have a discount code with Not Polish. Go and check out the description box below. And I also added a little tiny bear, so it's kind of like a cute, not, well, it's kind of like kawaii, you know, kind of design. I don't know, it's, it's kind of cute. So thank you so much for being here. I really hope you guys enjoyed today's Unsolved Mystery, and I will see you on the next one. Stay safe, God bless, and bye-bye.